from refusing to give a drug test, God knows why, to then maybe even facing suspension because of his actions. The USA DA has shot down Conor McGregor's claim of UFC drug testing privileges. For the longest time now, McGregor thought he'd be able to just ignore drug testing and walk right into the octagon, ready to fight for wins. The reason he feels this way is because there's a special exemption that allows athletes to bypass the required six-month return window. The window was established by the United States Anti-Doping Agency, also known as the USADA. The organization also happens to be the official drug testing partner of the Fighting League. Interestingly, though, former UFC heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar tried to pull off the exact same move but I'll get to that later on in the video. Cause there's an interesting story as well, since after all that effort, Lesnar flunked his drug test anyway. Now, Connor's really, really not in the mood to get tested. I wonder what he's hiding, really. But here's what he said. There are hurdles and whatnot, but we're in constant communication and there's an interview scheduled and a meeting happens and then it will be official. Right now, he's talking about his team's communication with the USA DA. So he and his team are absolutely adamant that they're going to do whatever the heck it takes to ensure that the guy isn't tested. Connor also mentioned, but the six months thing, what they had said was two clean tests and off I go. So I assume it won't be too long. Well, here's the problem. The USADA is already to burst Connor's bubble. Someone from McGregor's team really should have checked in with the USADA, cause the agency itself has other plans. The USADA has stated that it meets with all the athletes that enter or re-enter the testing pool. However, the agency, as of right now, has no meeting at all whatsoever to set up Connor. And interestingly enough, Neither has the USA DA received any notice of Connor coming out of his retirement to compete. The thing that Connor's having a really tough time understanding is that the UFC rules are clear and set in stone. In addition to two negative tests, an athlete must make themselves available for testing six months before returning to competition. And this really is the fair way to go about it, isn't it? Because this ensures that an athlete doesn't use the retirement status to gain an unfair advantage. Because during the retirement period, they might use prohibited substances, which could, of course, give them a massive advantage over their opponents. Now, there's still a small chance that Connor might not have to make himself available after all. Yeah, there's a slight chance that McGregor could maybe secure a special exemption once he's finished his coaching duties. The issue is, the promotion would have to like absolutely prove that Connor's case is an exceptional circumstance. At the same time, they'll have to prove that the six-month testing window could lead to competitive or financial hardship for McGregor. The competitive bit is fine, but how the heck are they going to prove Connor doesn't have the money to go through testing? Nah, that ain't happening. So he might just have to test, which might just be the right thing. Cause the UFC has been accused of protecting its cash cows. The reason why this is starting to become a big deal like this is cause the UFC has always been accused of protecting its cash cows. They're doing this with Connor and they did that with Brock Lesnar too. So him getting more rope because he's a cash cow is just not something that's going to qualify as an excuse this time around. The USA DA has quite clearly stated that, while the rules do permit the UFC to make an exception to this six-month rule, especially when its application will be quite unfair to the athlete, the agency just doesn't believe that this will in any way, shape, or form affect Connor and his performance. Because of this, the USA DA has made its position quite clear that Connor should be, no matter what, in the testing pool for six months. So it seems that the UFC's aim of protecting its cash cow and its golden boy 
is just something that's not going to happen this time around. Man, Dana White really wasn't kidding, was he? When he said there's a whole lot of work to do before Connor can return to the sport. And the thing with all of this is, the UFC really shouldn't be trying its very best to protect its golden boy. In fact, the promotion company should have learned a lesson from everything that happened with Brock Lesnar. Cause let's be real for a second. A repeat of everything that happened with the wrestler turned UFC star would be quite a disgrace for the fighting league. Cause he was banned from UFC for one year. And on top of that, the guy was fined a quarter of a million dollars. This all happened because the guy tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs back in the summer of 2016. Not only that, but Lesnar's win over Mark Hunt was overturned to a no contest. The guy literally tested positive for anti-estrogen drugs, clomiphene, and hydroxychlomiphene. At the same time, though, many fans argued that the fine just wasn't enough because it was only 10% of the $2.5 million the guy got for his July match, which he of course won because he was jacked up on drugs. So not only was he slapped with a fine, but as I mentioned, he was suspended too. Now imagine if something like this ends up happening to McGregor. That would, quite literally, be catastrophic, not just for the sport, but for the guy too. At the same time, his reluctance to get tested just kind of gives it all away, doesn't it? Because if he is indeed not doing anything wrong, then what's the problem here? Why are we even having this conversation? Because he can just admit himself to the pool. But he won't do that. And that is sus as heck. Because after all, Connor's almost 35 years old, and that means he's slowing down and he won't be as good as he used to be. But to finally re-retire as a champion, he's gonna have to get creative. And maybe performance-enhancing drugs are a part of his plan. This is exactly why testing is so darn important. Now here's the thing. Normally, the UFC doesn't play around with testing, unless it's a cash cow. The thing about testing is it's super duper important to ensure that fighting remains fair. But even then, the system just isn't perfect. Because despite it being illegal, many fighters will use steroids to enhance their fighting performance. The problem here is it's difficult to determine if a fighter is indeed using them. Like, yeah, they'll get penalties if they get caught. But that's the issue. If they get caught. Now here's where we enter the gray area. Testosterone replacement therapy, also known as TRT, because this is a steroid that does help build strength and muscle. But the thing about TRT is, it's not the same as steroid abuse. In fact, it's actually fully legal. However, fighters who do use TRT need to apply for a therapeutic use exemption, also known as the TUE, which, as the name suggests, is a medical certificate given to an athlete, permitting them to use something that's usually not allowed. But that only happens under legit conditions. The reason why I mention this is because Connor is still kind of recovering from his bike accident. So if he's avoiding testing because he's taking something to help him heal, he should just try to obtain a TUE. And folks, that's everything on how the USA DA has shot down McGregor's claim of drug testing privileges.